In this video, we're going to talk about risk management, another one of those core information security principles that you need to know. Now, before we get into this lecture, I just want to forewarn you that this is going to be a bit on the longer side, and it's probably going to be a bit dry for some of you, but it's something you need to know. So let's go ahead and let's get into it. Now, before we talk about what risk management is, we need to define different things that compose different elements of risk management and a risk assessment. So there are assets, threats, vulnerabilities, and risks. So what is an asset? Well, an asset is really anything of value within our organization. And when we talk about an asset, it can be people, property or information within our organization that are of value to us. So whether it be our CFO or whether it be our network administrator or our property such as our servers or our building or our information, our data, our proprietary data, these are all assets. They are something that is of value to us within our organization. So that's an asset. A threat is anything that can exploit a vulnerability intentionally or accidentally to obtain damage or destroy an asset. And there's one important aspect here, and that's that this can be either intentional or accidental, and it could be something that is man-made, or it could be natural, such as um, it could be an earthquake, it could be a tornado, it could be a storm, or it can be intentional, it could be a hacker, it could be corporate espionage, it could be an insider attack. A threat can come with from within your organization, it can be outside your organization, it could be an employee that spills a cup of coffee on a server as an accident and takes down your web server, that's accidental, and or it could be natural. So there are all sorts of different threats. And the one thing about them is that regardless of the type of a threat that it is, if it's exploiting some type of a vulnerability, then that can cause some harm or damage. And that can either to be obtained information, it could potentially damage your assets, or it could destroy them altogether. So that's a threat. The third thing that we want to talk about is a vulnerability. A vulnerability is a weakness of an asset that can be exploited by a threat. Simple as that. So if our asset has some sort of a weakness, maybe our server isn't locked up, it's just sitting under a desk. Well, that's a weakness because it can be exploited by a threat. Somebody can come in, pick it up, walk off with it. And if you don't have security measures in place, that's a vulnerability. So there are multiple different types of vulnerabilities and we have to consider them. Now, the next thing that we want to talk about is a risk. So when we talk about risk management, we are talking about risks. And let me go ahead and get rid of all this highlighting. So what is a risk? Well, a risk is a potential for loss damage or the destruction of an asset when a threat exploits a vulnerability. And that's where we get this very simple equation down below. A risk equals a threat times a vulnerability. So if a threat is able to use a vulnerability to exploit an asset, we have a risk. So that's our definitions. Now let's get into our definition of risk management. And on this slide, I've included a basic definition and an expanded definition. And we're also gonna talk about the overall primary goal of risk management. So let's start with our basic definition. So with our basic definition, risk management is the process of identifying, assessing, monitoring, and limiting risk to an acceptable level. And this is the key one here is that when we are looking to manage risk within our organization, we wanna do it to an acceptable level because there's a cost associated with risk management. Risk management costs us money and certain risks have a higher probability and impact than others. And so we have to look at them, we have to categorize them, we have to prioritize them, and we have to determine a way to properly manage them to an acceptable level to us, to our organization. And we'll talk about that a bit further when we talk about risk assessment. So that's our basic definition. Now let's talk about an expanded definition. And this one kind of goes above and beyond the basic definition and talks about a 
bit more things. Um, and I pulled this from my work because this is something that I do in day to day as I deal with risk management with IT projects. And we want to have an expanded definition. Now, there are certain things that, that aren't included in both of them that can go beyond the scope. I mean, if we're focusing on IT projects versus programs versus application development and so forth, we can custom tailor our definitions, but this is just a general expanded definition. So risk management provides a systematic and repeatable, and this is important because it needs to be a systematic and repeatable process. It's not a one-off process. Um, this is something we're going to do on a regular basis. And it's a systematic and repeatable process for identifying, assessing, prioritizing, monitoring, tracking, and regularly communicating the status of our threats, our risks, our issues, and action items that we developed to management, stakeholders, and executive level decision makers. So this is important because when we are devising a risk management plan, we're not just developing it and putting it away somewhere. We are tracking it, we're monitoring it, and we're regularly communicating it up to the higher level folks, to our managers, the various stakeholders within our organization, and the executive level decision makers if it's a risk that needs to be brought to their attention. And again, uh, reiterating the primary goal of risk management is where risks are reduced to a level that an organization will accept. So if we reach that acceptable level, then we're good to go. And that's the primary goal. With risk management, the goal isn't to eliminate all of our risks. That would not only be unrealistic, but it's impossible. And it would also be, if we tried to do that, it would be very expensive and in terms of the budget constraints a lot of organizations wouldn't be able to do that so we have to look at our budgetary constraints our personnel constraints and bring our level of risk to a level that's acceptable to everybody within organizations meaning our key stakeholders and also our stakeholders outside of the organization such as our customers and our business partners so that's risk management now let's talk about about risk assessment and what it is. So a risk assessment is where our risks are identified and assessed. So this is where we get down to work and we start looking for our risks. We try to identify them. What are all of our potential risks? And then we look to assess them. So we sit down with our key stakeholders and people look at our IT infrastructure. Okay, what, what are the risks that we can identify with our servers, with our personnel, such as social engineering, which we'll talk about in this section as well, or external risks and so forth. And then how do we properly assess them? And this is really the first thing that we do in the risk management process. We need to sit down we need to identify and assess our risks. And then once we do that, we can determine how to properly manage them. So here's an example risk assessment process. The first step is that we want to identify and categorize our risks. So we can break them down into separate categories. Maybe there's a financial cost to a certain risk. Maybe there is other risks that have availability issues. Maybe if we have a denial of service, there's an availability risk to our customers and so forth. So we can break them down into different categories and the categories are going to be different for every organization. Once we identify and categorize our risk, put them into high level categories, then we can assess them based upon the probability and impact. And we're going to talk about this in much more detail on the next slide where I show you um, how we would do that with a qualitative risk assessment. Once we've done our risk assessment, then we can assign each risk a risk score and prioritize them accordingly. And again, that's part of our qualitative risk assessment that we're going to talk about on the next slide. And then lastly, we're going to respond accordingly. And we'll talk about that on the last slide, different ways in which we can respond to various different types of risks. So that's our high level overview of a risk assessment. Now let's take a look at a qualitative risk assessment. So there are quantitative risk assessments and there are qualitative risk assessments. Um, you don't need to know the difference of those for this certification exam, but the most basic out of the two is a qualitative risk assessment. And I wanted to show you how you would do that. So a risk assessment score is our goal when we are looking at risk and we're assessing them. We're trying to assign them some sort of a score. And with 
a qualitative risk assessment, what we do is we would do our probability times our impact. And what we're doing is we're assigning our impact and our probability different scores. So a low score of one would mean a low impact or low probability. A score of two would be a moderate impact or moderate probability. And a high impact a score of three or high impact or probability would mean that well, the impact or probability is high. So probability, the likelihood that a risk will occur. The impact, well, the negative impact level if that risk occurs, if we're realizing that risk. So what we do is we multiply these times each other. So for each risk that we identify, we assign it a score of one, two, or three, or a number of one, two, and three for its impact and probability based on its severity of its risk, impact, or its probability. And then we just do a multiplication, the probability times the impact. And you could do this from a scale of whatever you want, 1 to 10, 1 to 20, 1 to 100. This is just a very simple example. So if we have something, and let me get rid of all my highlighting, if we have something that has an impact score of 1, which is low, or probability score of 1, which is low, 1 times 1 is going to give us an overall qualitative risk assessment score of one. And you'll notice that I have green listed here for one to three, and four to six is listed as yellow, and nine is listed as red. And so green means a low or no risk, yellow means a moderate risk, and red means a high risk. Now you can imagine if we had multiple different cells, if we had more cells and we went up to a, a risk score of 10, we would have multiple different scores and we, we would have to, you know, based within our IT organization, we would have to determine what we personally consider low, moderate, or high. You could say in some organizations, well, a six, six is going to be a moderate to high. So maybe we list this as a yellow score, or I mean an orange score instead of a yellow score for moderate slash high. Um, we could even call three a moderate risk. So it's really, it's up to you. But the whole goal with all this is to assign a score based upon doing this type of analysis. And then once we do this, once we have these assigned, then we can take the next step and we can look at measures to potentially manage these risks. And we call these risk response categories. And there are four different ones. The bottom one, residual risk, this is something that we wanna talk about at the end. This is not one of the ways that we would manage it. And these first four top ones are the way in which we would potentially manage a risk. And so we're gonna talk about those right now. So the first thing that we can do is we can look to avoid a risk altogether. So if we choose to not engage in a business activity, let's say that we're an organization, and, and this is a very simple example. Let's say that there's a risk to having our public web server hacked if we have a public web server. Well, then if we choose not to have a web server and a web presence, we can avoid that risk altogether by not engaging in that activity. So by not having a website, not by, by not having a public web server in our DMZ on our perimeter network, we avoid that risk of our web server being hacked altogether because, well, we don't have one. So there is no risk. So that's avoidance. Avoidance is a process of eliminating a risk by not engaging in a particular business or IT activity. Acceptance is the exact opposite. Acceptance is accepting identifying risk, meaning we're not going to take any action to try to reduce, avoid, or minimize that risk. And this is typically when our risk assessment is very low, when our impact or our probability of it occurring is very low. So if the risk is very low, e even if the probability is high, if the impact is very low or vice versa, then we may just choose to accept it. And then when the risk is realized, if we need to determine that we do need to start mitigating it, then we can take steps to mitigate it. But our initial risk response with that and our management plan is just to accept it altogether. So the next step or the next response is mitigation. So mitigation is typically what you're gonna do within an organization. And that is a process of taking steps to minimize the impact of a risk.
So for example, let's get back to our example of having a public facing web server. It doesn't really make much business sense not to have a web server just because we don't want to have the risk of it being hacked. Well, instead, we can take steps to harden that server to lock it down, which we'll talk about in this course to reduce the attack surface for hackers on that server. So we minimize the impact of that risk by hardening that server. That would be a risk mitigation response. And this is typically something that you would do rather than doing avoidance or acceptance. Mitigation is by far the most common. Now, the next one is transference. And when we transfer our risk, we are transferring the responsibility of our risk to somebody else, to a third party. And a good example of this is insurance or outsourcing it to somebody else where they are now responsible for that risk. So, for example, if we have our web server, we choose not to host it ourselves. We provide that a service through a third party vendor. And now they're responsible for a website. They're responsible for its security and its upkeep. And if it goes down, then they're responsible, not us. And we go to them because they are responsible. We can also have insurance in place. So let's say that we have a building in an area that is prone to flooding. We can have flood insurance in place just in case our building and our servers are flooded. The insurance will pay for that risk if it occurs. Um, and if it doesn't occur, then we have the insurance in place and we're going to incur that cost of having it. So that's avoidance, acceptance, mitigation, and transference are four different risk response categories. Now, there's one last thing that we do need to talk about in this lecture and on this slide, and that's the concept of residual risk. So when you decide to take some sort of a mitigation or transference activity, and so we'll put an arrow here and we'll put an arrow here, when we are looking to reduce our risk either by mitigation or if we're looking to, to push it off to somebody else through transference, there's always going to be residual risk because we can never mitigate and reduce it all together with risk mitigation. And when we transfer it, there's still going to be some risk to us. So even though we, for example, if we transfer our web server to a third party vendor, if our web server goes down, then our customers are gonna to complain to us. They're not gonna to complain to the third party vendor. So there's still gonna be a residual risk to that, um, regardless of what we do with our risk transference, our risk mitigation. Same thing with building flood insurance. If our servers go offline, well, we still are going to have some risk of downtime and the harm that's going, that's going to cause to our organization. And then having to put disaster recovery and contingency plans into action and having a cold side or a warm side um, and alternative plans to get our organization back up and running. So there's still going to be risk. So understand if you are taking a risk mitigation process or transfer process, you're always still going to have residual risk that you have to worry about and deal with and consider. So that's going to conclude our lecture, our lengthy lecture on risk management. Um, like I said, we didn't cover everything under the sun with risk management. We just covered the basics, and I think this is going to be more than enough for you for this certification. If you want to learn more about risk management, just go to Google or Yahoo or YouTube or wherever, and there's a plethora of information on risk management, probably more than what you're going to want to know. Um, but if you learn and just memorize the basics here in this lecture, I think you'll be fine for this certification. So if you have any questions about what was covered, in this lecture, let me know. If not, thanks for watching, and I'll see you at the next video. Well, I hope that you enjoyed today's video and you learned a lot from it. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Now, if you're interested in taking this full course or just learning more about it, check out the video description down below because I've included a link where you can learn more about the course and enroll into it if you'd like. So again, thanks for watching my video. I appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing you guys at the next video. Take care.